Welcome to the, the Ask Wellen Show, episode 70. Today I talk about prepping for stress, creating an effective team atmosphere, and personal development. Okay, here we go. Um, I still have a cough. This is episode 70, the big 7-0. I'm 30 away from my 100 shows. And um, what else is going on? this week. IEM is probably over by now. I have no idea what the results are because I'm recording this before IEM. So I'm either happy or sad, depending on how that went. Predictions. Let's see. Let's see. I'll predict now and you'll have the fun of knowing right away if I am right or wrong. How awesome is that? Um, except for the guys here on Periscope who are going to be wondering about the weekend. But those of you catching this on YouTube will uh, be able to vi- revile me right on the spot. I think that, hmm, this is a toughie. I think that Fnatic is going to do pretty well, but I think they're going to disappoint themselves and fall a little short. I think TSM is going to take the whole thing. First place, baby. I think they're super vengeful and super motivated and... They're going to be high on adrenaline from the time zone change. And it's a better time zone change going this way than coming the other direction. So they're going to have to drink like tons of caffeine just to like survive in the evening matches. And um, yeah, I think they're going to be super turned on. And I think they're going to be like very much underdog kind of mindset. Uh, CLG, CLG is going to come in like, is CLG and SK, SKT are coming in as the clear favorites. So... I have really high hopes for CLG, but I think that um, I think that the underdog mentality in 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 distance, like on location tournaments, is strong, very strong. So, like when you come in for a tournament and you're just like, we got to give it our all, and we really are hungry for it. Oh yeah, CLG split push style is really going to hold up. Um, 100% because they're really good at lane swaps but they're about to go up against Korea where lane swaps are done commonly uh, just for fun so I think that they're, they, they're a huge edge that CLG has over the American competition in terms of their like edging out small advantages and lane swaps is going to be nullified by the fact that they're facing international competition that's quite good at it um, like, I think Fnatic is, is really strong at the lane swap as well, at the 2v1. Um, or at the turret trade, depending on what, do you, what it should even be called now. I'm not sure, because it's never really a 2v1 anymore. But yeah, okay. So that's what I called. I call CLG to perform up to their level expectations, but that it won't be enough to close out on the Korean team. I call Fnatic will uh, do really well but will fall short of their expectations, and TSM will supersede theirs because they're coming in hungry for validation of themselves. And they will not tilt if things start to go bad, and so they'll scrap out really messy games, and they'll fight all the way to the end, and they'll have some really cool turnarounds for the victory. That's my prediction. And I'm probably going to be totally wrong, but uh, that's the fun of making predictions, is you get to be right or wrong. Kieran asks... How should I go into a stressful situation? How do you go about prepping yourself and what mindset should you have? So you should go into a, stress, into a stressful situation knowing that there's going to be pressure. And that pressure is going to exist whether you like it or not, whether you try to normalize it or not. It should exist because it actually allows you to perform better. It actually activates the systems in your brain that you need to perform at the edge of your ability, the, the front edge of your ability. And those systems are like, you know, noradrenaline, adrenaline, the testosterone, cortisol balance, and this kind of like uh, activation of the competitive, uh, super like in the zone fight, uh, fight or die mentality. And so to go about prepping yourself, you should have a pre-performance routine. And that pre-performance routine should include the kinds of things that will give you the optimal individual zone of of functioning that you have. They call it the individual zone of optimal functioning in the research. 
but you can just think of it as like think of your best performances and kind of like what you did before those best performances and those are the things that you want to um, make sure you do in order to kind of like prep for that zone we could I mean there's tools to like dig into it more granularly but I don't have time for that on this show really so uh, make sure that you are prepared for the fight make sure that 45 minutes to an hour before competition you're not trying to get too relaxed that you're kind of like leaning into the pressure and you're contemplating and thinking about like the things that you need to be doing or you're going through your own routine that you use to kind of like prep for that and if you're too low you need to regulate yourself up and if you're too high you need to like regulate your mind down and kind of take an edge off a little bit so you can come in like focused kieran asks how do you make an effective team atmosphere and how do you make people listen it's really strange to kind of take over for people if you are in a position where you don't have authority. So if you're not older than them or like you're not the coach or things like that. So the way that you make people listen is by giving them what they need. And usually what people need is like support, like a hug, empowerment, feeling strong, accountability. They need to be like yelled at or told what they're doing is wrong or respect. They need to be respected. And when you satisfy somebody's emotional needs, then you get their attention as somebody who's bringing them value. Yeah, seer. That's what it's called. One of my Periscope guys just mentioned seer. Um, I, this is Peter Young's seer technique, by the way. Um, you should look him up. He's awesome. And when you satisfy somebody's emotional needs, you become valuable to them. And when you become valuable to somebody, you get their attention and they want to listen to you because they get results when they listen to you. It's the same way that I get authority in teams. As I provide them value, they get better, and they go, whoa, and then they listen. Uh, so if you, if you take that approach, then you can even provide um, value to somebody just by listening to them. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can provide value to, to your teammates. And as far as effective team atmosphere, it's really good to get deep information exchange between teammates so that the bonds develop it's really good to win a lot of stuff so that you have like bonds that are like kind of tight knit with the competition hormones and then you want to make sure that you try to eliminate passive aggressive behavior and try to promote aggressive behavior so things that are like more confrontational like direct confrontation in the moment but then afterwards are forgiven and not like passively aggressively like stored up and, and held on to so that is what i think is an effective team atmosphere basically Anonymous asks, how do you overcome negative social comparison and evaluation and focus on your personal development? Um, this is tough because if you look at like the top level performers, they, their mindset is very much based on like the competitive comparison as well as their own personal comparison. So they score high on both metrics. They're not driven by one extreme or the other. They're kind of driven by both. And... So I like to say for myself that um, I take what I need at a given time. So if the game is going very badly and my motivation cannot be centered around surpassing my opponent because they're way ahead of me or they're way, way worse than me, then I need to strongly pursue development and learning as the motivation for me to focus during the game. And likewise, if I'm like inches from my opponent and like I just need to outperform them or like I just need to catch stay ahead of them so I can win the game, then the biggest drive that I have is that competitive kind of motivation. And so I rely on that to kick me into gear and to help me focus deeply. So it's healthy to have competition when you, um, when you can switch it off, basically. When you can have an identity outside of defining yourself in relation to your, your success or your failure in terms of win rate. So I think that the, the danger that I see is that people who get to the top on talent and they, they get to the top like basically just being a perfectionist and competing all the time, they don't have the character to actually stay at the top, which is why you have all these shooting stars that like kind of and collapse because they start to run into adversity and they start to run into things that they can't cope with. And they, they can't switch into this like mastery orientation, this self-development orientation. And so they just crash and burn. So I would say like it's not a bad thing to have this kind of like talent where you just like are driven and 
this co by competition, you just like seem to beat people all the time. But you got to have another switch. You got to have, a, have a, the other mode for the character building when stuff gets tough. Okay, so that is the show for today. And my question of the day, if you could answer in the comments below or on Facebook, if that's where you're catching this show, is um, how do you mentally overcome this like uh, com competition versus mastery thing? Are you driven by competitive desire? Are you driven by personal mastery? Um, and how do you know? How do you know that you're like the competitive mindset or the mastery mindset? How do you switch from one or the other? Let me know. Thanks. Ciao.